This is a tricky one. This one gave me trouble the first time I saw it. Um, at the end of the day, it's a plug points into equations question. And that is fairly obvious to me. Um, and the reason it gave me trouble when I first did it is I doubted myself and I didn't really use that strategy. The reason I know it's plug points into equations is just look, they give us a bunch of equations in the answer choices. And a graph is basically a collection of points. So odds are good, I'm gonna uh, pull some point off this graph. There's a story here, we gotta do something to the point, but it's gonna get changed in a way that then we can use the equations with it. So we have to understand the story. And, and that is to me the hardest part really, is it, it, you have to memorize some facts here. They're telling us that this is the graph of f of x, which has some weird equation with some missing pieces, right, a and b. Now I could probably figure those pieces out, but it's kind of annoying because the points that I normally like to plug in don't exist on this graph, right? I love points that have zero in, as part of them, and they're not there. And so zero and one, these points are not existent, and, and that's gonna make it much harder for me to kind of figure out what's going on. So hopefully there's a way around this. What's happening is we're taking that, that graph, that f, and we're changing it, and it's becoming this g, and those are the equations that were given in the choices. And they're telling us that g of x is equal to f of x plus four. So that's the part we need to memorize. We need to understand what that means in terms of the shifting of the graph. And, and many of you have memorized this because of school. You were taught this, you were told to memorize it, you had a lesson on it, a test on it, but you've forgotten it. I, I remember always struggling with this as well. But um, now for the SAT, this is coming up more and more often. So you're going to need to memorize it again, at least until test uh, SAT time is over. So what this means, um, let me put it up here, g of x equals f of x plus 4 means that we are taking the f graph, the f of x graph, and we are shifting it, how can I show this, uh, shift 4 to the left, okay? So this is where I always got, had trouble in school. If it's a plus four in the parentheses, it's moving in the negative direction, four. It's backwards. If it were a minus four, it's moving in the positive direction, four. So it confused me because that seems counterintuitive. But if you memorize it, you're good. So what that means then is any point that's currently on the F graph is gonna move left four units. So let's just take a point. Let's try this one right here. Negative five, negative six, right? So this is an F point and it's gonna go four to the left, right? So one, two, three, four gets me here. So actually let's use a different color for the G. The G will be this green, and that is now the point negative nine, uh, negative six. Okay. So all now we have to do is take that negative nine, negative six and try it out in these equations and see, well, if this is truly an equation of the G graph, it should include this point. So if I look at choice A and I plug that in, uh, six over negative nine is not equal to negative six, right? Those are, those are different things, right? Six over negative nine is negative two thirds. So the fact that that's not producing the y coordinate that I want is not good. So let's just go down the line. Six over, this is negative nine plus four. So that's six over negative five. That's also not negative six, that's wrong. This is six over negative nine plus eight. So six over negative one, that's negative six. We gotta try D, let's make sure. Six times negative nine plus four over negative nine plus four. Well, that's not gonna change anything. So that's six times negative five over negative five. So we can multiply out or we can just reduce the negative fives. This is just positive six, so that doesn't work either. So C is the answer here. At the end of the day, it's actually really easy because we're just plugging things in. There's not really much thought to like why this equation has this um, kind of format. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, there's probably an easier way. I think I can also take that x plus four and plug it in to the uh, f of x equation um, and get something like uh, g of x equals a over x plus four plus b. Um, 
And maybe that means that only choice C makes sense for some reason that I'm not seeing right now. But uh, yeah, I don't really know uh, if that's going to work it out. It feels like we need to know the B to be able to get that. And again, maybe I could have figured that out, but that seems too time consuming. It's, it's easier for me to picture the actual point moving on the graph. Um, and just see it and just get the actual numbers. Now that's just my normal move for any SAT question is I'd rather have numbers than variables. So uh, try to do that. But yes, unfortunately, if you don't understand how translations and shifts work on uh, functions, then you're gonna have trouble with this question. Normally the, the easier ones are when it moves up and down. That would be if we had the um, a shift up of four would be when we have f of x and the plus four is outside. That's more common, that's probably more memorable for you, but uh, they are asking about these left-right shifts more. So get comfortable with them, memorize them, and so when they come up, you can kind of recognize what to do uh, uh, pretty quickly.